four or five or six days off. Okay, we're not hosting the All-Star game. Our players are going. We're going to go spend time with our family. Now, all of a sudden, the the GM and the assistant GM and everybody, not that they're taking that much time off, but th- they can take some time off. Now, all of a sudden. Yeah, you, know, can... as good, you know as well as I do that the GMs, you telling me that Dave Dombrowski or Matt Arnold, who you, by the way, you work for, or I don't know, would throw out there Billy Epler, you think they're actually taking time off? During the All Star, no, they're not. The Mets are. The Mets don't know what they're doing. They're trying to figure out if they're going to find us because of because of trades. But the the entire scouting department, right? Kind of. Oh, those, come on, you know as well as I do. And now, listen, you want to play devil's advocate? I'll play devil devil's advocate. You know as well as I do. All the scouts that I know and that you know, they never turn it off. This that's their life. Yeah. Scouting is their life. This this is their life. They don't like to take time off. Come on. All right, the coach. Uh, okay, so you're talking from a coach's <laughs> perspective. I do like I do like your argument the when the players it, get a few days off. I like your argument where it's coming from from the player development side. I guess I'm looking at it more from a marketing side, but you know, also too, I don't know. I'm more conservative when it comes to to player development. I guess, and and I don't see. I understand where you're coming from playing in game action, but we have so many tools, so many resources now at all of these complexes that I, I'm not so sure we need to play a short season game in front of 10 fans or short season season in front of 10 fans every every night at the ballpark, right? I'm, I think it's we can easily do inner squatting, for lack of a better term. We can do something like that and then get us, that will get us to instructional league come October. And then, of course, there's winter ball and, and you know, things like that. So I understand where you're coming yeah. from, but. You know. Yeah, we're still missing out on a bat. A bats are key. You know, I, I agree. And, and I, I the agree. high school guys, you know, they can kind of find a way to get some at bats, but it's it's tougher on the the college guys that didn't, you know, go to the College World Series. I mean, that's long. I mean, we're talking about the College World Series because there's so many draft picks that were playing really late, but the college season ended at the end of May, right? Like the majority yeah. of people were done at the end of May, and now all of a sudden we're mid July when the draft is so for those players that you know maybe there's a guy at florida state right they didn't make it really very far in the postseason or maybe there's a guy at sam houston state right they didn't make the playoffs but by the way i was so right about what is it caden krause krause he was like my favorite guy in the draft a couple years ago from sam houston state man i saw his swings and i'm like this guy looks like a big leaguer already the way he works out and then boom he went he went out. He's already in the big leagues for the Orioles. Aiden Crowell? Exactly. Aiden Crowell, you're saying? It, uh, no, not Caden Crowell. Colt, Colton. Wow. Oh, gosh, what's that people's name? I can still see a swing. It's so good. Like, he's a oh, he's well, a oh, no, I'm going to figure this out. Hold on. Uh, you keep talking while I look this up. No, oh, I got it. Never mind. You don't have to keep talking. It was Colton Clayton, Colton Kowser. Colton Kowser, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway. Now, he, he's a lefty swinger, too. Yeah, and he looks like the Kowser. same. No, he's not the same size as Self, really. But. Yeah. But who, well, I can't say. Who, well, no, I can. I can. I can make the comparison because he's also a center fielder. He's bigger. Like Sal Freelich. Who would yeah. you rather have? Sal, well, I, I actually I'm putting you on the spot here because Sal's in your organization. Yeah. I can't. I can't, I can't ask you that. Well, I but you, um, I, you, you know, I mean, if I had the fourth pick in the draft, I would have taken. You know what I mean? Like, all right. Fair enough. Didn't have the fourth pick in the draft, so now let me ask yeah. you now, since we're on the Major League Baseball draft, I have to ask you about Ellie De La Cruz, and I'll get to that in a second. Just want to get yeah. quick thoughts on him. Yeah, if you watched him or not, I'm sure you have. Mm-hmm. But um, but now that we're on the draft, and I think you can tell me this, I think you can answer this question. Mm-hmm. Again, for those who don't know, Jake works for the Brewers, and, I, and he's not supposed to give out a lot of information. We have to be very sensitive and careful to these things. But notwithstanding, I, I'm going to ask anyway, if you were picking, right, let's put yourself in, uh, I won't say putting yourself in your boss's shoes, put yourself in in. Who's picking number one overall? Well, okay, put yourself in Ben Sherrington's uh, shoes, general manager for the Pittsburgh Pirates. You do have they have the number one overall pick. Who would you rather pick? Who would you rather take? Would you take the righty kid Paul uh, Skeens? Scan mm-hmm. Skeens. Can't say his name. I know what he looks like. Know how? Yeah. Uh, knows how he? I know how he throws. That's all I need. That's all. Or would you rather have the Dylan Cruz kid? By the way, both those guys are teammates. Mm-hmm. I think right at LSU. Yep, teammates. Yeah. So many names, I get confused. Um. Who would you rather have, though, of the two? You have the number one overall pick. You're the general manager. You've got the last say. You're, you're, it's your decision, your pick. Your owner asks you, Jake, 
Who are the Pittsburgh Pirates selecting number one overall? If you can answer this question, yeah. who would you pick? Number one overall, either Paul Skeens, right-handed pitcher from LSU, or Dylan Cruz, center fielder from LSU, who a lot of people are saying could actually go number one or, well, yeah. the draft's already happened as we're talking here, but but could have gone number one like <laughs> That's right. This will come out a day after, yeah. Um, I I don't know their needs, so. It's not here. Yeah, I, it, it does have to do with needs. Uh, I will say that Skeens is, he's he's really impressive. Um, he's a big, burly guy, right? He's got great composure. He throws hard. He's got sharp breaking balls. He's got good command. Um, if I needed somebody to help me maybe next year on the mound, I might take him. Um, I would probably take Cruz though, if I was in the rebuilding phase, similar to like what Baltimore has done 